Hello and welcome to today's edition of Your Questions Answered with Father Gruner. I'm John Veneri. Uh, we take your questions that you send us via email. Father Gruner answers them. We have discussions about them. Continue to send them to us, questions at thefatimacenter.com. On the previous two programs, we were talking about um, this whole uh, unprecedented situation of having, to use their terminology, a pope and a pope emeritus, both dressed, as, both dressed in white, both dressed as pope. Uh, maybe from the back you couldn't tell which one was which. Uh, but in any event, um, we talked about the, uh, the, uh, the, the pressure that Benedict might have been put under uh, to resign. These are all questions that serious people are asking in the Vatican. Uh, but uh, what we wanted to uh, do in this program was talk about how this might relate to the third secret. As we know, John, that the secret was officially they released a text of the secret. Uh, it's not the whole text, and we can talk about this. I mean, I'm certain we published about it in our books and all the rest of it. But there are two texts of the secret, and we'll deal with the question coming up. But uh, there's a second text that has not been released, just to get to the point. Mm -hmm. And this person asked the question, is anything in the undisclosed third secret that refers to this situation? And the answer is, I believe yes. And, um, and so how do we know what's in the undisclosed section? If we, it's not disclosed, how do we know? Well, we've talked to people, and people have written down and reported to the public what they know, or parts of them they know what they know, is in the third text. So in the, our book, Devil's Final Battle, quotes a number of people in there. And there's other people who have spoken in the well, video. People like Father Alonso, who, Father Alonso, who, had, who, had un, who was the official archivist of Fatima, many interviews with Sister Lucy, yes. and in the position to know. Yes, yeah. Father Alonso, you have Pope Pius XII, when he was Cardinal Pacelli, speaks about the suicide of altering the faith, in liturgy, her theology and soul. He says it's in the, in the message of Lys, Our, Our Lady to Lister Lucy. It's nowhere in the message that we published. It's got to be in the secret. Mm -hmm. So it's not just him. you got people like John Paul II speaking about it. You know, can the, can the woman, can the mother with all the force of love that she fosters in the Holy Spirit and desires everyone's salvation, can't she remain silent when she sees the very foundation of her children's salvation undermined? And he says, no, she can't remain silent. But where is it in the message that he talks about? It? It's in the secret. He says, can, you know, it says the message of Fatima tells us not to follow the, the tail of the dragon that drags down one third of the stars of heaven. Where is that in the message? It's in the secret. So we've collected these things in Devil's Final Battle. We've also put some of them into, uh, Chris Ferris put them into his book, The Secret's Still Hidden, and, and other places we published on it. So it's, it's undisputed as far as I'm concerned. There's no one can say to us that the secret has not has been entirely revealed. So having said that, and it deals with the crisis of faith. It deals with yeah. it. Just, it talks about we have we have a witness who says it talks about the change in the mass mm -hmm. against the change uh, against, against the change in the mass against the Second Vatican Council calls mm -hmm. the council evil. Mm -hmm. So I mean, those are all things we. So, but is there something about the papacy in this? And the answer is yes. And what is that thing? Malachi Martin says that there will come a time when a pope is under the power of the devil. Now, some people looked at John Paul's time and looked at Paul VI's time. I think it's this time. Mm -hmm. Because, I'm not saying the other people are wrong and I'm right. I'm simply saying it certainly applies to this because if you have a one pope, let's, let's just take the scenario. If Benedict is really the pope because he didn't really resign, then the fact that he tolerates certain things going on in the church when he's really the pope, he's directing his duty to not stop them. That would be... You know, and, and but he would say, and his style is that well, he's not going to interfere because he doesn't interfere with, but that's because he's made this false distinction between the ministerium and his munis, the the, the office and the and the yeah, and ministry. We, we talked all about this in the yeah, previous early, programs. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it, the, the fact that he's if he's actually still a pope, then he's got to correct Pope Francis when he does something wrong. Mm -hmm. And, and so this, that's, that's the kind of thing. So, but how, how would he get away with it? He can make this false distinction in his mind. Well, I'm no longer the Pope in charge of ministry. Therefore, I can just not interfere. That distinction is a false distinction. But the devil's convinced him that it's a true distinction. And therefore, that's why. But that would then be, would be in the, that's why I think all the more reason for us to have the secret. The actual text of it, we have Malachi Martin saying, a Pope will come who will be under the power of the devil for a time. That may be this time. All the more reason we have the right to the secret so we can guide ourselves. Since they're confused and confusing us, it's about time we had the words yeah. of Our Lady. That's what I would say. Uh, this is tremendous confusion. I think, I think even um, you know, this, this uh, leading Vaticanista journalist, uh, Vittorio Missouri, didn't he use the term uh, diarchy? 
Oh, yes, yes, we, we yes. have. A, I mean, I, I don't know if he's saying this is a good thing. Or, first of all, it's impossible. Well, but, he, but this is a term he used, dyad two, two. You know, a diarchy. So we have two popes. I mean, yes. I only saw the headline, but is, is yeah, well, yes, well, yes, he's he, he's actually now. These the, you have to is it tongue in cheek? Is it uh, well? You have to these yeah. these Italian journalists. They're very sharp people. <laughs> Not all of them, but these guys here. And so, what does he really believe in his heart? God knows, okay. But what is he saying? He says, well, the candidate says it's okay, so it must be okay. So we have two popes now. Mm. But it's not but, okay. <laughs> but, 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 as, but as Sochi says, all his article leads to this question, which is not asked, who is the real pope? Yes. Since Missouri won't ask the question, I'll ask it for him. Who is the real pope? Question mark. Mm -hmm. We need the secret yes. to, to sort this out. And again, too, as I said in the previous program, you know, these are questions that have been dumped onto us. Yes. I mean, uh, because uh, the, the proper tradition and structures uh, and rules really haven't been followed, and it just leads to this type of confusion. And as you said previously, uh, I, and I agree, that uh, this confusion is going to, it's going going to, to grow. It's, it's going to grow, absolutely. And, it's, and until they resolve this question, I mean, the way... I can tell you though, once if they release the third secret, the full text of it, the other text, the one they're hiding, yes. that would bring a lot of light to this whole situation. And I'm not sure they're going to be able to get this light without releasing the secret at this point. Because there are going to be people who say, who say, well, you know, I like so and so. So they're liking so and so. That could be Benedict, that could be Francis. Liking or not liking the man, it doesn't make him the Pope or not the Pope. Right. But if the Pope is not, if one man is not the Pope, and he's doing things or saying things which are contrary to the faith, then we need to know, we don't have to concern ourselves with what he does. I mean, you can pray for his conversion, whatever, but we don't have to concern ourselves with, he's not the Pope, so we just ignore him, basically. And I think now, there's more to, on the subject, but we, we just keep it to this. We'll keep we, it to that, yeah, but in the meantime, too, um, uh, I think, too, maybe you want to uh, say something you know, to, to the people watching. There's a, don't get all torn up over this. I no. mean, what, what, what do the people do? Well, I think you told a story recently, John, where uh, 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 Father Sierra, was his name? Was oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, so Father, just... Father Juniper Sierra, uh, when, when he was evangelizing in, um, California, in California, and he wrote a letter. This is back 300 years ago. Yeah, 300 him. years ago, and he wrote a letter to a confrere in Europe. And mm -hmm. as part of the letter, he said, oh, when you write back, could you please tell me the name of the Pope? I, learned, I, need, I want to know who he is and what his name is so I can mention him in the canon. The canon of the Mass. The canon of the Mass. And, uh, and it was, what that shows is the Catholic Church needs the Pope. Yes, I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to be accused of saying something I'm not saying. But in our day-to-day -day life as living as Catholics. Obviously, Father Sarah was able to carry we don't, on. We don't need the Pope in order to live our Catholic life. He was evangelizing, hearing confessions, getting uh, uh, walking from converts, place to place. Growing, going from place to place, spreading the faith, living the faith. The faith is growing, and he doesn't even know who the Pope is. Yeah, he doesn't so, know his name. So he doesn't know what his name is. He just knows we have one. Yes, <laughs> but, yes. But, uh, but what that drove home to me is, is, is that um, you know, we're living in an unprecedented Period. period. Absolutely. Where everything the Pope does is transmitted to us. It was it was enough when we had television, but now with internet, yeah. it's just it's just automatic, and um, and so everybody follows every detail of the Pope day by day by day. That's really not what the Catholic is yeah. does, you yeah. know. So uh, we continue to live the faith even if well, with Benedict, tremendous with, confusion is being. If, lived. if Benedict is the Pope, if Francis is the Pope, one or the other is the Pope. It doesn't change our day-to-day -day life. No, we still it, will, to, it, will, yeah. it will raise questions, yeah. but in our day-to-day -day life. Yeah. So and certainly we don't need to get all bent out of shape. Uh, God has permitted this confusion for a reason. I believe it's to show whatever the final result is, I think it will show that the papacy has been put, put to tremendous pressure and, and, and persecution, which the message of Fatima said, if my requests are not granted, the, the world will be punished by four things. Uh, uh, famine, war, persecution of the church, persecution of the Holy Father. Now people say, you know, we look at the papacy, whether even non catholic well, it's just an institution. Like, you know, there's the Queen of England, you have the mm -hmm. papacy. But the difference is, this is a divine institution. The Queen of England is not a divine institution, but the papacy is. 
And the papacy, even to people who are not Catholic, they look to it for some guidance on certain issues when they have nowhere else to look. But now, so it's a blessing for the whole world. But this blessing has been taken for granted. And I think God is allowing us to, uh, uh, one of the punishments is the pun persecution of the per Pope. And this persecution of the Pope has affected the whole world. Yes, it has. And, this, and so whether it turns out that this pressure brought about his resignation uh, on canonically or whether it didn't affect the canonicity of it, it will still bring out the fact that he is persecuted and, and in ways people will understand that instead of saying, my, this is what, you know, because people don't understand the papacy is so important. Even worldly people understand, even people who hate God mm -hmm. want to control the papacy so they can use it to promote their own agenda. And so this kind of thing will, is what is being, God is, this, there's a lesson here that the whole world is going to learn when all the truth comes out about this. So uh, we continue to, to uh, learn our catechism, learn the faith, learn Catholic morals and live them, say our prayers, sacraments, and also, as uh, the Father Message says, uh, pray a great deal for the Holy Father. Yes, absolutely. So, thank you, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode.